Hello and welcome, my name is Jonathan and in this video I am going to be doing a extremely long overdue update on a video that I said that I would make probably three years ago now. So forgive me my absence, forgive me for my laziness, but in this video we're going to be talking about the 18.6 year cycle, where it came from, who's been following, who's been tracking it, where we're going into the future, and all the good stuff in between. I have no time frame on this video. Uh, I hate doing long videos because I think a lot of people drop out and they're impatient towards the good bits. So uh, please, if this is a topic that possibly interests you, just stick along because there's going to be golden nuggets, there's going to be little hit bits along the way. And I would really recommend that you just follow it minute by minute, second by second, all the way through, okay? So with that said, uh, we're going to be starting off with the financial timetable. Now I've spoken about this one or two times in the past. The financial timetable was created by WD Gann uh, back in 1909. Now I've got a lot to go through today. I've got a few uh, slides on the left hand slide. We're going to go through these in a moment. But we're going to start off on the financial timetable. We're going to just take a look at how it was compiled by WD Gann and what it all means. And then we'll take a look at some updated versions and then we'll take a look at the actual Dow Jones. Okay, so the financial timetable compiled by WD Gann 1909, December 25th, 1989, revised to March. 13th 1934 now at the top we have 1784 we have 1803 1821 1840 and so forth and in this what we have if we take a quick look is we have for a century so a hundred year cycle we have one two three four five and then we get out of that century so by the by the end of the fifth 18 year period We've entered a new century, and then we go one, two, three, four, five, and then we head out into, you know, we get down to the next century, which is the year 2000. So we have over 200 years of data here that we can reference. On the left-hand side, starting at uh, 1784, on the right-hand side, ending in 2008, you've got to remember this was in 1909. W.D. Gann said that, generally speaking, in the top box where we have A, we can generally see low stock prices, strikes, depression, despair, beginning of new business cycles, and so forth, young men becoming prominent, etc. Generally in the B period, we can see high stock prices. In the C, we generally come across a panic. In the D section, we generally have low stock prices. E, high stock prices. F, panic. G, low stock prices. H, very high stock prices. And then in J, we can start to see some sort of market top forming, where you have a major crash, four years of falling prices, business stagnation, uh, bread lines, soup kitchens, despair, unemployment. And then in K, we're sort of at the bottom of the cycle where we see same as A, so up here. Um, tons of unemployment and lots of deaths. Now, a lot of, uh, a lot of prominent deaths, meaning a lot of rich people who lost their money during the, the market crash. Uh, end up killing themselves and so forth. Obviously not a good period, but we can, if we go through history, we might be able to line up a bunch of them what, that is happening through this period here. So again, uh, created in 1909, WD Gann would have highlighted uh, 1929 as very high stock prices, uh, and then into the 1930 period, where we all know 1929 was a market peak. Uh, it did bust in 1929, but major panic and crash, which led us into 1932, 33, etc. Uh, so how was this created? Well, WD Gann created this using what's known as the North Node of the Moon. I'm, I'm not going to go into the North Node of the Moon in this video, primarily because it's a completely different subject. But the timing of this North Node, where it, it revolves around you know, in a circle, and it gets back to its exact same point, happens roughly every 18.6 year period. Now, because of the fact that we can't do an 18.6 year period, uh, you know, starting from year one and going down to you know, year 20, we, we can't do an 18.6 year period because it's not a whole year. WD Gann stagnated it by switching between 18 years, 19 years, 18 years, 19 years, 18 years, 19 years, to sort of average it out about 18.5 years, okay? Now, our friends over at the Time Factor, Frank here, had actually updated the chart, and I'll go through a an, 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 second updated chart uh, for you very soon. But he brings us out into the current cycle that we're in now, which happens to be ending around 2026 with, uh, you know, normally the year which we see a major bull market highs end. So we're pinpointing 2026 as a possible top. 
um, and then a crash there on after. So it can be updated, you just need to revise it, you need to adjust it, you need to get it back in sync with that 18-19, 18-19 period cycle, where WD GAN does say we should be looking to revise the cycle because it will, it will get out of sync over time. Now if we were to use that exact same uh, column where we had WD GAN's financial timetable, uh, we put this together back in 2018, uh, we can see where these ABCDEFGHJ periods would be forming over each time period, each year and so forth. So if we start each cycle and we look out 18 years into the future, we can put these on and sort of highlight exactly where we would be looking for these periods to occur. Now as you can see, sometimes we get like for example J, this is uh, 18, uh, sorry, 1986, J was expected to hit, so let's go back, uh, 1986, major panic crash, but as we know the market did head uh, higher for one more year into 1987 before crashing. Uh, before then resuming its its general uh, market placement. And then we moved into 1990 and moved out to 2010 where we had the exact same formation where we're looking for tops and bottoms, major highs, etc. J again, looking for that major market peak before the crash, etc. Uh, and then that brought us to the current year that, again, you got to remember, uh, so it's not complete data, we did this back in 2018. Uh, we were looking for potential periods where we'd see E, F, G, H, J. And E, if we go back to let's say Frank's one here, looking for high stock prices, which is 2019. F, panic. So E, high stock prices into 2019. F would be a panic in 2020. And if we go forward, whoop, wrong one. Uh, G, low stock prices 2021. Let's go back here. Uh, 2021, 2022 period is when we were looking for low stock prices. And then we would be moving into the H period, which uh, Frank hasn't actually listed here, but very high stock prices. And then we'd be looking for that J where the market would crash. And if we go back into this, we'd be looking for high stock prices to start to appear again around 2024 into 2025. We, we expect that the stock market would be, you know, directionally biased higher. And then our panic crash, uh, end of 2025 into 2026 would be the time period. You know, we give it one to two years. So Frank's actually listed it as uh, 26 top, but I'd always go 25 to 27. We'd be looking for a top around that time. And that's how we listed it around 2025 to give us, well, that's, this was around the end of 2025, um, to give us that 26 to, to end of 26 time period. So that is how we would use the financial timetable. Now, Louise McMurther also, McWurther, that didn't come out at all, McWurther, also had a very similar theory when she uh, created the book Astrology and Stock Market Forecasting. Uh, she had on page, and I scrolled up uh, just to actually give you the title, on page six, that she had the business cycle chart. And this is not very easy to see, so I did find a, uh, a cleaner version. She had actually suggested that when the North Node, so this little symbol up here is actually tracking the north node okay so this little chart is tracking the north node around we have leo here we have so as the market moves into leo virgo leo cancer gemini taurus aries and so forth when the north node would track into this period here we would generally see that the market would be higher and as we moved into virgo into leo so the north node trend the market would be towards its peak in the ninth and tenth house and then it would fall until it gets down into Pisces. And that's when prices are down. That's when they're at their lowest. Well, this is the business cycle, okay? So when it comes to the US market, the US market went into, uh, went through Virgo and into Leo, so when the market was at its peak, uh, around 2017 into 2018 time period. So that's when the US market was at its strongest. That doesn't mean that the stock market cannot decouple from the business cycle. But that means that when the, when the economy was at its ultimate peak, it then started to track lower and it will go down into Pisces and into Aquarius where prices are down. Now again, we have a 180 degree period here where prices are above normal when they go into Leo and prices are below normal when they go into Aquarius. Now at this point here, we're looking at this time period to be around 2026 to 2028. That is when the market should be at its lowest prices. Now, again, I'm giving you a, a, a few year variance there, you know, 2026 to 2028, because we're moving through signs, okay? 
So we've got to give it that time period. But around 2028, being a rough midpoint, we'd be looking for prices to be at, at their lowest where we would start the new business cycle. Okay, now this is a 18.6 year cycle. Based on the lunar node, based on Louise McWhorter's uh, forecasting, which is a great complement to W.D. Gann's theory where he could actually time the actual dates when these were happening. Now, on the right-hand side of the scale, uh, which no one is going to show you, there would generally be a table here which would track the North Node through the, uh, through the zodiac signs and we'd be able to get a more accurate uh, definition. And I don't think that we have uh, tracked it anywhere on any of these. But maybe in the future I'll show you where we can see uh, the exact years where Leo occurs, Cancer occurs, Gemini, Taurus, and so forth. And we can actually see where this North Node travels into each, or as, as one would say, it ingresses into each. Ingressing is just moving into, uh, moving into the new sign, uh, where it ingresses into each period, and that would signal a change of uh, market momentum. So we have this Scorpio to Taurus, where markets are meant to be at equilibrium, you know, fair valued. Then we have overvalued and we have undervalued, and we can sort of price all that into the markets. Okay, so let's move on. So in 2019, I believe it was 2019, we put together uh, with Catherine Cashmore, Cycles, Trends and Forecasts, and we looked at the 18-year real estate cycle, and she put that out to her, um, she put that out to her subscribers in part one before the market had actually unfolded uh, for the COVID events. Um, however, she did update it with part two, and she includes a lot of new stuff in here, such as where the North Node was, how to, how to check it out, and how to understand it, where it is in relation to the mood, the North Node, South Node, etc. Um, she used Dr. Culvert's chart here, where we were tracking you know, potential peaks, where the North Node, North Node cycle, again, just to reiterate, is the Moon cycle. Um, where the peaks were occurring in the market, and, she's, and Calvert, in this instance, is tracking 2025 for a top. Uh, we look at uh, Samuel Brenner and George Dretch, and we take a look at also the 18.6 year cycle, which we had put together already. Now, again, we went through this cycle and we updated it, uh, well, we recompiled it, I should say, uh, to make it a bit easier to see. And then we actually updated it to include, uh, we went out another actually 40 years from where we were actually sitting at the time. So we, we compiled this in 2020, I think, geez, what did we put it out? I think January 2020 or something. We recompiled this and we were looking for, you know, our low stock prices in 2020, a bit after we had our panic, sorry, 2021 after we had our panic. And then we were looking for high stock prices to occur around 2023 with our major panic crash occurring around 2026. And I always like to say 2025, 2026, okay? But then that brings us out into the next cycle where we're starting on 2026. Now, when we put this together, we use Calvert's um, lunar cycle where he was saying, well, each new cycle should start at the, at the trough of the cycle, okay? So 2008, 2026, um, where we're moving from peak to trough, peak to trough, peak to trough, and so forth. So he went through and we did it again, and we looked at the next cycle, and that is to end in 2025 with a peak occurring around, uh, I think that my peak for this cycle is occurring around 2044, um, with the next one occurring around 2062. So keeping that in mind, and I've already shown you uh, several reasons if you've been following my work on Facebook or whatnot, uh, these timeframes and how exactly we're tracking them, we're using the financial timetable along with you know, where, where we are in the zodiac when we're tracking the lunar north node, okay? So if we wanted to know exactly how this cycle plays out, you know, if we, would, if we were to go back to this here and we would actually try to find out how this actual cycle plays out, well, this is, a good indication of what this cycle would be. And it is broken up, it's an 18 year cycle, 18.6, etc. It is broken up into two parts, and it's broken up into two parts because we have what's called a mid cycle slowdown. Now, WD GAN did go through that mid cycle slowdown where this is the panic. The panic in F, where that usually occurred, uh, is where we would generally see a panic in the market and the occurrence of the mid cycle slowdown. Now, what we've seen in the past is that the mid cycle slowdown happens, it happens every single cycle but it doesn't always happen at F. Generally, sometimes it can, well, I shouldn't say generally, sometimes it can happen in D, uh, C to D. So that is also something we need to factor in when we research this topic. 
that there's not always going to be a perfect match and sometimes there will be anomalies that we need to work with, okay? So moving forward, we're going to be trying to track this 18 year cycle and this is the exact framework of what it looks like, okay? So we have seven years of rising prices, a slowdown, seven years of rising prices, I shouldn't say seven years, we have a midpoint which starts the seven year cycle again. And then we have four years of falling prices into the next up move where the cycle starts again. So what does that look like? And what are we actually looking for? Well, we also went through this in 2018 where we were sort of tracking out to 2028 where our new cycle would occur. And I'm going to go through now and I'm gonna bring up a chart and just show you how these cycles occur. So I'm going to get out of this super size screen right now. We're going to start off at 1913 and move out to 1932. 1913 being sort of a, uh, a low for the market at that time. So we're having this period here. We're moving out to 1932. And what we can see, I'm going to try to keep this semi-professional, is that if we just follow the same period that WD Gann was saying, where we're looking for a panic in the markets to occur before the seven year period, around that seven year time period, we would then be looking for a panic to occur in the markets, which occurred in 2020. 1920, I should say, sorry. I'm going into the 100-year cycle, shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so around 1920. And then what happened after that? Well, we saw the market scoot higher into its what would be called the F period, into the J, and then into the H, into the K, and down the market goes, okay? If we were to go forward in time and do the exact same thing, well, the market has a bottom. The market moves higher. We then have our mid-cycle slowdown. And then after that mid-cycle slowdown, the market advances again and it moves into its second time period. So that'll be 1932 into 1940, 1940 into 19, as we go into the, this is the actual end cycle here. Bada boom, bada bing. Uh, however, the market did continue to advance and we move out into the next cycle. So we're gonna switch back to that chart now because we're gonna get 1932 to 1952. Now we get rid of this one. We're going to start it from 1952 and move out into 1970 now. Gotta zoom out just a little bit more. So we're tracking this period here as the start of the cycle and we're moving out a little bit further into this period here. And what we'd see is we'd have a mid-cycle slowdown. Now if we take a look here, 1962 period, we had a mid-cycle slowdown. Let me just get that right. That's where the market sort of broke lows before advancing again. And if we just keep going with our sort of cycle pattern where we have our mid-cycle slowdown, that end of the uh, peak, end of the cycle peak, and then the major crash. Okay, it's the same sort of framework that we've been watching before. Where we have our rally, mid-cycle, next rally, and then the crash. Okay, so let's move out to the next one, just so you can see it all. We're moving out to the 80s. I need to just remove this one, give me a second. So here's the next one, let's zoom in. We have our initial trend. Then we have our slowdown. Then we have our blow off peak into the top. And then we have our major crash. Again, that same sort of framework. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, we move out to the next one. Where we have the market starting the cycle. Market's moving up, market's moving down. Market's moving up, and then end of year peak, end of cycle peak, I should keep saying, the market crashes, okay? So this period here was the mid-cycle slowdown. So where does that lead us today? Well, I'm gonna put on some extra bars here. What that would lead us to is a cycle that looks relatively similar to all our other cycles, where the market's moved up, the market to move down, the market will move up, 
Uh, I'm not going to put a price target on it just right here. The market will continue to move up out into that end of cycle peak. Sorry, I didn't put enough on, on the chart. Add another zero, why not? And then after that, the market will find its peak and it will crumble, okay? That is why we have a trajectory of rising prices from here and not falling prices because we're following the same framework that has been set out here. Now, as we can see, every single time the market action is different, okay? There's, there is no sort of uh, repeating bias in the market sort of get what appears to be a mid-cycle here or a major crash panic, another major crash panic. But ultimately, it was the ending crash panic that actually brought the market down when we start our new cycle, okay? Again here, a lot of people would have been thrown out of the market in this major crash panic. However, the market did advance. Now, it did go sideways for a while, up and down. It did advance in the end before it finally crashed. And that is why we have no reason to doubt that this market is going to go higher and is going to continue this framework out into our 2026 peak. Let's bring this over just a little bit further and then into a potential 2028, 20, uh, 2029 time period where the market will crumble lower and it will, no doubt about that, it will crumble lower and it could possibly even crumble as low as these here. If we want to get a trajectory on how far the market crumbles, it generally crumbles 50% at the end of the cycle, okay? So let's Let's add that to the theory now. So let's go back a few. Uh, let's start on this one here because uh, this is also very, very good research. Let's look at our retracements, okay? So we start here, we move all the way up to here, looking at that 50% retracement. Let's start on this cycle here, move up to here, looking at that 50% retracement. I want to get the Cycle starting from here, moving up to here, move uh, through the 50% out to 61.8% retracement. And that would mean if we want to price a potential top on this market and a potential bottom, then we need to look at where we expect that 50% retracement to be. So if we're expecting a low to occur here or here, then we would be expecting a top to occur around here. So we sort of do some reverse engineering there to sort of get that peak. If we're expecting a low to be below the below the, uh, this low around the COVID low, then we'd obviously bring our uh, market top down and so forth. But generally speaking, once we find the top in the market, we can be expecting the market to drop on average 50% of that peak. No doubt the 1929 collapse did drop a lot further than that, that peak and that WD GAN goes into the reason as to why that was a spectacular bull market especially referencing that 60-year uh, cycle of his. However, that is how it is. And this is, this, it doesn't matter actually what market you're looking at, what market you're trading, because it's actually going to work in every single market. Because the world is now synchronizing to this 18-year period. And if I just go ahead and chuck it on a monthly, we can definitely see that the Aussie market, if we do the exact same thing, the 1992 low into our mid-cycle peak, into our major peak and then down again just like that there there is the exact replica of this cycle that we're looking at okay now we go again add into here now a little bit of a, a note for you guys if you try to do the calculations the cycle started at, yeah, around 2011 to 2012 okay this is where the market sort of found its new low so it didn't breach the the final low that occurred in 2008, but it was the cycle end low. So if you go 2012 out to 2020, if we count that time period, uh, we'd be looking for a top around 2019. Uh, the market topped February 2020 before crashing, before advancing again. So we have that crash here, and then market advance, and then we'd do the exact same thing where we're looking for that market to advance into a potential top. Um, where we'd then be looking for that, that run lower into that 50% mark, okay? Again, this can be done on any market. It's the exact same framework we're looking, as I was always told and, and taught, it's same, same, but different. It'll always be the same outcome. It's always the same you know, ingredients to the recipe, but the way it's baked can be slightly different. And that means that you know, the actual outcome of this cycle may be slightly different. And there's many, many different uh, factors influencing that, whether it's astro-based or economic-based. 
many different factors influencing that, okay? So that is uh, pretty much summing up this whole theory here. However, I want you to just keep an eye on this because it is going to play out and it's going to play out in front of you. And if you want to just, you know, focus on the timetable because it'll give you clues as to what we're looking for. Again, we're not looking for anything major to happen until 2026. So the economy should just chug along. But what I wanted to show you before I wrap up, and I, I like to spread these little gems out on purpose because a lot of people drop out, they miss the gems. The, if we go back to Louise McMurder's book, she says, let's get the clean copy. She says that the US economy, or the business cycle peak for the US, reaches its top as the market moves into Leo, okay? So prices, the business cycle, prices, the governments, the economy, et cetera, is at its ultimate peak, and then it starts to normalize, and then it starts to decline. There are several times in the US market where we, the American market doesn't get this blow off top. It sort of just gets a staged rally before a slight decline, a staged rally before a slight decline. But the actual growth that occurs oftentimes in the first half of the cycle is much greater than the second half of the cycle. So if we just do like a, uh, let's see if I can find the tool price measure. Jeez. If we do a price measure, say from this low here up into the mid cycle peak, and then we do a price measure from this low up into this peak. I just want to change this to percentage. And I'll do this a few times just so you can see exactly what I'm saying. We get a 345% rally in price into the market peak or into what Louise would say is the strong side of the business cycle. And then as the business cycle starts to head lower, we can see that the, yes, the market is trending higher, but this percentage gain is now lower. Obviously we have now our 60 year repeat in the cycle. So this one is an anomaly just like 1929. However, we get a rally here. I'll just a few times just so you can see how, how, how it would play out anyway. This is our 1929 repeat. Uh, sort of situation here again so the anomaly more than double okay let's go to the last one we had again just change this to percentage 380 percent give or take and then right here 91 percent you can start to see now and these just for the people who have eyes to see because I can't point this out any clearer than what's happening right now the market stages its major rally in the first half of the cycle. In the second half of the cycle, it's the winner's curse favor, it's the sucker's rally. The market does advance and the advance is strong and then everyone thinks it's gonna be this major repeat of the first half of the cycle, but it is a sucker's rally. And yes, it doesn't mean that you can't be a part of the sucker's rally because markets will advance based on speculation and they will continue to go forward based on speculation. But we're not gonna get a repeat that occurred in the past, okay? So let's go ahead, percentage. Let's just go 150% hypothetically, okay? Let's say the market rallies 150%. It gets up to 45,000 by the end of the cycle. Hypothetically, okay? You can go out and do your averages or whatnot. Uh, if we were to be looking for a low uh, 50%, that would give us a price point to around 26,000 into the end of the cycle, okay? So that would mean that the market still, you know, still could rally higher from here. But that's just using 150%. But what we know, because we're not getting a 60 year repeat, is that the market won't stage a, another 264% rally off its top because the mid cycle slowdown has already occurred, okay? Uh, I think that for now, that is all I have to show you. Um, I'm doing a lot of other research on definitely a lot of other things, however, I wanted to just sort of bring you up to speed on how to look at the 18 year cycle, how to pop it on your chart. Obviously, I'd recommend that you actually make your chart much neater than I have today. Um, you know, sort of design your charts like this, so that way you can sort of gauge just how it looks every 18.6 years, etc. Get that mid cycle slowdown in there. And um, definitely go through and get your uh, timetables, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J updated so you can see how that plays out and then start doing your own forecasts on when you think that the future ones are going to occur and then start to pair them up. And then overlay that with Louise McWorthers uh, 18 year cycle 
and then you'll start to get a really good picture on if prices are likely to be higher or lower, if the business cycle is likely to peak out or bottom out and at what time frames. So yes, I really hope that this is uh, at least a jump start or a booster into your theory and analysis on cycles. Again, this has been done using the lunar node. Again, the 18.6 year lunar node. It's not just you know popping the moons on your chart. No, it's not, it's not that simple. This is a much uh, longer time cycle and, and this is exactly how it looks and how it works. So I really hope that this has been something that has um, really just changed, changed your mind or opened your eyes to this, okay? Um, yeah, if you want to find out more, you can join Catherine Cashmore at um, Cycle Exchange of Forecast from Fat Tail. She's, she's got a lot of knowledge to share and work closely with her, but that's all there is. I'll talk to you in the next video.